All right, another video on array lists. Like you thought there couldn't be any more, tiny bit more here. Uh, really quickly, going to show you two quick demos with array lists. One has to do with a class that I made called Movie. Just to show you really quickly, the Movie class, which we saw before, is right there. It has a name, a year, a genre, constructor. Just to show you really quickly here, my Movie Keeper object, you're not limited to making an array list of just strings or classes that are pre-made in Java, but you can obviously do an array list of any class that you've created. So I won't even run this one here, but just to show you the general idea, array list of movie, movies, make your movies, add them to the list, show your movies. So you can peek at that code in there, and that gives you a lot of flexibility, right? When you're now creating classes and you want many instances of that class, but you want them nicely organized in some sort of list structure that requires very little work for you. Now, the other one I wanted to show you was Number Keeper. Number Keeper, this sort of has two parts to it. I'm going to show you a, a big idea with ArrayLists. Way back when we were saying that the ArrayList was constructed with the idea to keep a list or an array of objects. So remember this idea that really the array list inside it has an array of type object. This poses one problem when you're trying to keep track of numbers, or at least it used to pose a problem when you were trying to keep track of numbers. What happens is, is our primitive types, like integer, integer is not a memory address to a number. It's basically storing a number. So the problem here is you cannot put a little int in an array list. You can't put a double in because it's not an object either. And you can't put a little Boolean. And there's a couple other ones you can't put in there. Because remember this idea that classes all come from this mother class called object. But the primitive types do not. So they don't count as objects. And so you can't put them in the array list. Now, this is what you had to do a few years ago when you're doing Java. And this used to be on the AP exam. And this is the second part here. You'll see here I've made an array list of type capital I integer. What they had to do was they made a class. And the job of that class was basically to hold one little integer value in it. And they called this class big integer, or you know, with the capital I there. And so really the job of that class is to hold a number. Because it's a class, and it's going to be an instance when you create it, it can go inside of the array list. And so you'll see down here my array list that can store integers, right, with a capital I. You can now do this kind of stuff. Make some integers. Now, it looks a little longer to make, but it's not that bad. Integer I, new integer, 95. And you can probably guess whatever number you give it as a parameter in the constructor, that's the value tucked inside of that object. Integer i2, 96. Now you just do what you normally do. Clear the list, add i, add i2. Now when you want to get them out, what's coming out is going to be a big integer object because you declared your array list as type big integer. And so when you actually go to get these out, you have to keep a big integer on the side. Big integer. Temp equals numbers get me slot zero. It grabs it out. Now, what the heck is the value in there? Temp is a big integer. And big integers have a method inside called int value, which is the value of the little int that's inside of it, the primitive type. And it sends it back to you. So you'll see here what I've done. Whoops. That's what I should have done right there. Perfect. Print out Y. Whoops, I've messed that up again. There we go. And so little int Y. Hey, temp, give me your int value inside, and that's a little integer. Now, this is what the students had to do a few years back. And this was you know, the proper way to use numbers with the, uh, bit, with the ArrayList class. And if you need to do a double, well... They also had capital D for double class as well. And they call these things the wrappers because all they're really doing is wrapping up a primitive value inside of them. 
Now, here's the nice thing. You do have to know this stuff, but in your code when you're making your programs, for the most part, people got so annoyed with having to do this, you know, it seems like such extra work, just add a number to the list, they developed something called auto-boxing. And the auto-boxing is this stuff here. I just go numbers. And remember, numbers, it's still an array list of big integer class. But I'm just giving it a 95. Something's happening behind the scenes here. It actually auto-converts that 95 to a big integer object for you. So it's basically doing this for you behind the scenes. It's auto boxing up that little number into an integer object for you. Saves you the trouble. And the neat thing, same thing when you go to get the values out. If I say, hey, get me the big integer object in slot one. Well, that's going to be the 96. It sends it back. When it detects that you've written little int on the left-hand side of the equal sign, it actually auto-converts for you. So really, with this auto-boxing, now it's almost like you don't even have to know this stuff down here, but you do have to know that stuff down there, if you know what I mean. So this is perfect for your coding, right? You can basically just use numbers like you can use them, but what you should know is behind the scenes that really... There is another class, a wrapper class, being used because the ArrayList class stores references to memory addresses of objects. And little primitives, little int, little double, little boolean, they do not do the memory addresses like objects do. And so that's your number keeper example. And just to show that it actually works here, I'll run movie keeper, I'll run number keeper, and you can look at this code yourself, and you can see here, memory addresses, the names of the movies, and there's my 96 and my 95 that are printed out. It all works just fine when I go to uh, run this code. Okay, And so that was the 95, and I think that one was the 96, or maybe the other way around. And so, perfect. That's sort of the end of the basics of ArrayLists. In a project coming up, we're going to use ArrayLists. And for really the rest of the course, you're going to probably use ArrayLists when you want to make lists of things. So this is a class you have to master. And it's huge on the AP exam, too. Always questions on it. Thanks for watching.